there. Josh would normally be filming this video, but he's making Jordan and I work on the weekend like the cruel boss he is because he's sick. So in this video, Jordan will be showing you how to spice up your motion graphics by stacking particle effects on top of each other. The first thing we'll do is set up our shapes in the first particle emitter. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create the shapes we'll be using as our particles. So we'll go up and select the ellipse tool. I'm going to just make a basic white circle like this. Right click the circle, select pre-compose, we'll name it circle one and click OK. Open the pre-comp, go to composition, composition settings, and we'll change the dimensions to 800 by 800. Now take the circle and scale it up so that it fills most of the composition like this. Back out to the main composition, go over to the project window, duplicate the circle one pre-comp, bring circle two onto the timeline, then open it up and we're going to just change its color from white to orange. Now back in our main composition, we have our two shapes we'll use as particles, and we want to actually hide these layers so that they don't show up on their own. Next, go to Layer, New, Solid, click OK, then go to Effect, Simulation, CC Particle World, open the Particle tab, set Particle Type to Textured Square, open Texture, set the layer to be Circle 1, then go to Color Map and set it to Origin Constant. Now we have a basic emitter outputting our white circle shape layer. To further tune the emitter, we'll set the birth rate to 0.1, longevity to 3, open physics, set velocity to 0.65, gravity to 0, go back down to texture, set death size to 0.5, then bring the size variation and max opacity to 100%. Now our first emitter is set up and we can start expanding on it. Next, we're going to create the rest of our emitters for the composition. We'll start by duplicating particle 1. We'll change its velocity to 0.4, extra to 0, extra angle to 0, death size to 0.4, then go into extras, set the random seed to any random number so that now we have more variation in our white circles. Next, duplicate particle 2, and this time we're going to go into the texture and change the layer to our second circle so that now it emits the orange circles. We'll also change the settings, so we'll increase the longevity to 5 seconds, animation to direction axis, velocity to 10, inherit velocity to 225, gravity to 2.5, and resistance to 10. Open direction axis, set the axis X to 1, axis Y to 0, open gravity vector, set gravity Y to 0, Z to negative 1, then finish it off by setting the death size to 0.15. When you're done, the orange circles should emit in a tighter spread toward the camera like this. Next, duplicate particle 3, go to particle, change the particle type to line, set longevity to 30, in physics set animation to fractal omni, Velocity to 0.01, gravity to 0.5, resistance to 20, open gravity vector, set gravity Z to negative 0.2, and lastly change the opacity of the entire layer to 50%. We want our composition to start with our particles filling the screen, so highlight all of the particle layers, drag them all the way back in time, extend their duration, then keep repeating this process over and over until the timeline starts with the screen filled. Now our particle layers are set up and ready to go. Before we keep going, we all know that making motion graphics can sometimes be frustrating and time consuming. To help fix that problem, we've made thousands of templates to save you time and let you produce awesome work under one simple subscription price. You can check out templates from all of our packs, including our Motion Graphics Professionals pack, and simply click apply. Now you can easily modify the parameters of the template and you're finished. So if you want to get a head start in progressing your business or career, check out every template we have with our links below. Finally, we'll finish off our main composition with some post-processing effects and a simple transition. Start by highlighting all the layers, and then pre-compose them into a pre-comp that we'll just name to Main Particles. Now go up to Layer, New, Solid. We'll set the color to a dark gray and click OK. We'll use this as our background layer. Next, go up to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, then Effect, Noise and Grain, Noise. Set the amount of noise to around 6 or 7% and uncheck Use Color Noise. For the intro transition, create another new solid, make it pure black this time, 
click OK, put it above the particle precomp, set a keyframe for position on the black solid and particle precomp at the start of the timeline, move forward a bit on the timeline, and then set another keyframe. Move the black solid all the way down so it comes off the screen like this, then go back to the first keyframe and bring the precomp up a few hundred pixels like this. Highlight all the keyframes, press F9 to make them easy ease, open the graph editor tool and pull the curve for both sets of keyframes all the way to the center to smooth out the animation. Now the composition starts out with this nice intro transition. Lastly, you can finish off the composition by adding some titles or other accent graphics. And now you have this amazing composition filled with dynamic particles easily made in After Effects. What does Josh do for the outro again? Oh yeah, that's right. Be sure to download our free After Effects packs, hit the subscribe button, and always be creating.